Are we live? I think we are. We're live, baby. Wednesday night live at the OSA. Allie, what are we talking about tonight? So tonight we're talking about acclimating your new fish, both freshwater and saltwater. So, uh, yeah. Freshwater is better. Okay, take the floor. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, wait a minute. First of all, <laughs> let's go and rewind. What? Before we get started tonight, I just want to hit you guys up. We haven't done too many videos. If you guys haven't checked us out, we got a lot going on with YouTube. Anyone wants to see all the build up that's going on with the coral palm, make sure you go and check that out on YouTube right now. Also, new freshwater fish just yes. in today. We got a ton of freshwater fish. Like, so many new stuff we haven't had before. Uh, Scott just hit me with this order today at like 10 a.m. He's like, yo, I got fish coming in an hour. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get to the shop. And I'm like, run in. <laughs> so we just got a ton of new fish. Super, super cool. Go check out a live video we did today. Um, yeah, so new fish. And then we also got new fish on salt water. Salt water too. We got new, a whole bunch of cool salt water fish. We got a lot of tangs, a lot of purple tangs. Oh, so if you're purple looking purple for a purple tang, we have a lot of them. And coral, we are loaded. Absolutely loaded. You guys get to see how the coral farm's coming out. Now, anyone that doesn't know, I want to talk about some of the events that we got coming on. We have the big Black Friday event is happening, and that is Black Friday. If you haven't been here, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. I'm not going to release the percentage off yet. I'm going to wait till the week off to let you know what it is, but it is epic. It is the biggest sale, like, for percentage off-wise we do the entire year. Black Friday is absolutely epic. I'm telling you right now, Black Friday sales. get here early. Early. We start <laughs> very early in the morning. Yeah. And it is crazy. Keep it's absolutely no, crazy. No holding livestock, correct? Right? Yeah, no yes. holding livestock. Be here first. Set up a tent outside. No, just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> no, no tents outside. <laughs> I'm not, here. Penny will not like that. <laughs> Landlord will not like that at all. <laughs> do not set up tents outside. <laughs> but it's an absolutely awesome event. And then I'm really excited about this. So much has been going on on the coral farm. Everything's really coming out. Chris is over there right now working on it. We are opening that to the public for one day, December. We just double check right now. Our Christmas party. Yeah, December 14th. So we're going to do a massive Christmas party. That's like a big customer appreciation party. We have an absolute blast. We have everybody come in. It's a big percentage off. We do food. We do raffles. We're going to give away a free tank. And we're going to let everyone go on over there and show people the inside of it so they can see it. And I'm just grateful. I get to do what I love every single day because of you guys. Yes. We all are. Yes. We all love you. We, 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 the big amount parts. we get to do because of you guys, it's unbelievable. So I thank you guys so much. Uh, Tanks, we are loaded in aquarium systems. So if you're oh, looking for a new tank, we have setups for everyone. Freshwater, saltwater, sumps, whatever your budget is, we have the right tank, what you're looking for. Also, if you've been in here, whoop, back here, uh, we're actually doing some more, uh, moving stuff around. We're moving out of section. You're going to see some changes, but I'm pumped. It's going to look awesome. So for tonight, we're going to get into acclimating new fish and that's one of the things between yes. salt water with salty alley and we're gonna hit it with freshwater joe salty alley take it away please all right guys so um this is probably more for like the newbies but also you know we just want to share how we do it too so that people can kind of get an idea there too um so when you get a new fish what do you do so you got to make sure you acclimate them especially our saltwater fish so our all of our fish that are in our fish section uh, we run at a very low salinity. We run it around 1.8, we like to keep it at. So 1.018. Uh, what this does is it just, yeah, it just helps keep um, parasites away. So parasites can't exist in like a low salinity. So we keep it nice and low. And we also treat with copper in our tank. So I'll get to that as well. Um, but as far as acclimation goes, we've got a few things that we recommend. And then Joe will talk about fresh water after that. But first... More importantly, just kidding. <laughs> We're talking about salt water. So, um, so this is what we have here. This is the AccuDrip. This thing makes it so easy. Uh, I'll open it up here. Maybe I'll try. It's a weird. Box. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as Ali was saying, uh, this is something that a lot of saltwater hobbyists use all the time because uh, you want to make sure that uh, the salinity is perfect when you're adding a new fish. So, there hey, we Steve. have it. Super, super cool. <laughs> hi, Chris. Hi, Steve. Oh, hi, Chris. You guys are watching. Hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> So some, some comments in the comment section. I'll yeah. try to, we'll try to respond to for you tonight. Um, so this is the AccuDrip. This thing makes it so easy. This is what I use. Uh, so this is like a solid piece. This hooks right onto your tank. And then this, you just squeeze it so you don't have to suck on it. Yes. No Scott doesn't on like tubes. that. <laughs> no. no, no, no. Yeah, so, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> so you use this here. Um, so, and then right here. Uh, there we there go. go. Uh, so this is like a little piece that you just kind of roll up and down. That... Um, that changes how much water is coming out at a time. So when you're trying to acclimate 
saltwater fish, you want to take it slow, especially ours, like I said, because we have such a low salinity, you want to make sure you take your time with it. So usually a drip that's steady, but not super slow. You don't want to be able to count the drips because that's just way too slow and you're going to be sitting there for hours and the fish isn't going to be happy after that. So usually it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to acclimate a fish properly. So you're looking more like a steady stream. Um, it's kind of hard to like say without showing you but it's you, you don't want to be able to count the drips but you don't want it spraying out either so you kind of want right in between um but usually so with saltwater of course we recommend acclimating them into your quarantine tank if you have one that's always like ideal but we know not everyone has a quarantine tank so either way if you run your quarantine tank at a low salinity, salinity like we do you know it won't take as long to acclimate if you're putting it into your reef tank um you're obviously, or your fish only tank, whatever it is, uh, obviously you're acclimating them to that salinity. So that's gonna take some time, uh, like I said, usually about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, so as it's getting colder too, uh, this is mainly if you live far away, but even if, even if not, you know, it just depends. But if you live like five minutes down the road, you probably won't need this, but if you're living, if you live an hour, a couple hours, and we know a lot of our customers do, so um, this time of year, you might need a heater in your bucket too while you're acclimating, but you just wanna always keep an eye on that with your thermometer. You know, you wanna make sure that it's stay, you know, it's not overheating in the bucket. A bucket can heat up really fast. Yeah. So you just wanna make sure you're keeping that in there as well. Um, but with the cold weather, the water's gonna get cold and a cold fish is not a happy fish. So we wanna make sure they're up to temp as well before you put them in your tank. You don't want the water to get freezing and then put them in your tank, it's gonna shock them. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree that it's a good thing to do, especially in the colder months, because by the time you get them home, the water in the bag uh, is definitely dropped significantly in temperature. Um, but even like, uh, you're passing water through this little, little tiny tube, mm -hmm. um, and it's coming in contact with the ambient room temperature. Uh, so it's going to decrease in temperature as it's going into the bucket, too. So if you're like, acclimating that fish for an hour, hour and a half, um, it's still not going to be the exact same temperature that it is your tank is. Uh, so it's a good thing to always have some sort of heater, I think, in the yeah. acclimation bucket to for make sure. sure that they have the smoothest transition into, into your tank as possible. Uh, you know, the same thing goes for your freshwater fish. I personally, uh, most of the time, um, especially with discus, are always going to drip acclimate because they're so sensitive to uh, pH change. Um, and it's always a good idea to drip acclimate any fish. Um, a lot of people will just, especially in fresh water, will just temperature acclimate, you know, 15 minutes to a half hour, floating the bag in the tank, um, and then they kind of do the plop and drop <laughs> method. It is not always the best or recommended. If you have the time and you have the equipment, um, it is regardless of your fresh water or salt water, and if your parameters are exactly the same, um, drip acclimating that fish is going to be the best way to transfer it from uh, our tanks to your home aquarium. There's a lot of so. things that are different too. So even if even if you get a fish from our inverse system, so our mm. inverse systems are at normal reef tank salinity, so 1.025. So if you're buying a fish from there, even though the salinity is the same, there's a lot of things that might not be the same. You know, nitrate levels, like everything like that. So you just still want to drip acclimate anyway. It's just not going to be as long. You know, so before you are ready to put your fish in, so usually. There's like a rule of thumb too. So I said like about an hour, hour and a half, but also too, if you, once you triple the water volume in your bucket. So a lot of times, yeah. once you get it to like the top, you're probably good to go, but always check your salinity with salt water, you know, because you might need a little more time if you're still like two points off. So I would still, you know, if you're within a point, you're usually good to go. But if you're two, two, three points, you definitely want to keep acclimating still. You might have to dump the bucket a little bit and then keep going. Um, and also too, when you are drip acclimating your fish, you can actually, take out as much water um, from like the bag that we gave you, you know, pour them into a bucket. And then you can take some of that water out, just enough so the fish can sit upright. You know, if you have like a copper band or like a tall fish, like a heniocus or something, that's different because you don't want them laying on their side in the bucket. Yeah. But you want to be able to make sure that they can sit upright, but you want to do the least amount of water as you can because you, like I said, you're going to be tripling the water volume. So if you fill the bucket halfway, that's a lot of water and it's going to take forever to acclimate. So that's what I would do. When we get new fish ships, shipments in, so they've been, you know, on a plane or in a van or whatever. So we always have heaters, um, thermometers. We have force drip acclimate for like two hours. Make sure everyone's doing well. So it's gonna, it works the same way at home too. So just make sure that you're dripping, you're using the thermometer and making sure temperature is good too. Um, once you get them in your tank, if you're, you know, either you have a reef tank, freshwater tank, fish only tank, quarantine tank, whatever you do, uh, one thing you might want to do is actually medicate with some Focus and Metroplex made by Seachem.
if you watched our first video about quarantine tanks, which was quite a while ago now, it was yeah. our first Wednesday night live video. Um, but definitely check back on that if you are interested. We talked all about medications and medicating your new fish and in, you know, having a quarantine tank in general. So uh, these medications are just helpful for when you're getting a new fish. It just helps. This metro specifically is meant for... Uh, parasites. external parasites and internal parasites so that's a good one to feed your fish it's safe for a reef tank as long as you're doing it properly yep. again you know we can that's always teach you how to do that and it's all in our videos as well um, yep. but the focus is a binder so you would have to get both of them uh, yep. and feed so that to your fish for binder for and medication yep um, yeah good mix with for saltwater mysis shrimp uh, freshwater I'll use brine mm -hmm. or brine spirulina um, and just make sure you follow the directions to uh, to a T so that you don't have excess medication floating around in the tank, especially with reef tanks. Yeah, usually. You don't want the corals eating. Yeah, yeah. Like usually you uh, you thought out you thought your frozen food. It doesn't really work with pellets, really. I mean, yeah. maybe if you soaked your pellets, but yeah, yeah. I would just do frozen food. <laughs> um, do, <laughs> just frozen, do frozen food. <laughs> do frozen food. Um, you always want to strain the frozen food before mixing yes. the meds. Otherwise, they're not going to bind. It's just going to be in the water. And then when you feed that to your reef tank, that is going to get into your corals, and you don't want them feeding it. So uh, if you just make sure it's fully binded to your food, then it's safe for your reef tank, and it's good for your fish too. Any new fish, like yeah. I said. And so same thing with uh, with planet tanks. A lot of people, obviously, you not want to dump medications into your planet tanks because it can be detrimental to the plants. Uh, but this I do safely use upstairs all the time, as long as it's you know mixed correctly and it's not going to uh, denature off of the food, um, and then the fish are eating it directly. And, I, and being very careful not to overfeed, making sure the fish are eating all of it and it's not laying around and decomposing. So one other thing too I want to talk about uh, with uh, saltwater fish, I mean, I can actually do the opposite with freshwater. I just don't know how often you guys would do that. But um, when you get a new fish too, it doesn't hurt to do a short freshwater dip if you have to, oh, yes. if you feel like you have to. Um, especially this is mainly if you're going into a quarantine tank and you're, you know, super careful about you know, your fish, which everyone should be. but. I know not all of us do that, but um, if you're going into a quarantine tank and, or even just your regular tank, you can do a freshwater dip too. It doesn't hurt to do it. Uh, there's some fish that don't do well in it. So, you know, you wouldn't want to do that. Like Anthias, you can do it a very short amount of time, like yeah. 30 seconds, you know, um, but it doesn't hurt to do that. So when you're doing a freshwater dip, you want to, uh, if you're filling it, I mean, of course you're going to fill it usually just from your tap because then you can adjust um, your temperature. We just make sure you add a dechlorinator into the bucket always. And you also want to check your pH. Your pH is really important because uh, it can put the fish into shock if your pH is, say it comes out of your tap at six um, and the fish is supposed to be at eight, not good. So you might have to buffer your pH to make sure that it's eight or whatever your fish is in. And then you can do a short freshwater dip. We never do longer than five minutes, but like I said, there's some fish that don't do well. Certain wrasses, like certain fairy wrasses and antheas don't like it. Um, but that's an option too. You know, it's definitely not something you have to do. I don't do it personally at home, but we do it here at the store with every new fish that comes in. We always do a freshwater dip before they go into our system. Yep. So it definitely doesn't hurt. Just in case there's any kind of external parasites on them that you don't want past your tank, it doesn't hurt to do. Yeah. 17 beautiful people that are watching us right now. If you guys have any <laughs> questions, hit us up in the comment section and we'll answer you. Yes. Why are you guys uh, are talking about it too? I know you guys are in the process, <laughs> but I like also, talk. since we're talking about acclimating, let's talk about corals as well. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I'm going to have you guys grab into that as well. Yeah. So corals are another one too. And we get it a lot. Um, so as far as corals go, you don't have to drip acclimate them, but it definitely doesn't hurt to usually. So we, we give them to you in a cup. Usually if they're a small, if they're a frag, so you can float the frag cup in your tank, and then you do that for you know 10, 15 minutes. And you can also open that ca that cup up, pour out half the water, and fill the other half with your tank water. Close it back up and let it float for a little while. And then of course we want to dip our coral too. Yes. So again, we've had another video about this. Uh, if you want to check back and watch the whole thing, but yeah. we'll also just go over it real quick. All the live videos are on YouTube as well. Uh, so if you just head over to the YouTube channel, um, you can see all the past live videos there. We've talked about uh, how to dip your corals. That is uh, where all these products are in that video. So. It says there's seven. There we go. Oh, okay. We got a new comment from, oh, here we go. Ethan, you guys going to the Waterbox Family Reunion. Scott will be at the Waterbox Family Reunion. Right? I will be. I'm going to be a blast. I can't wait. Scott is a guest speaker at the Waterbox Family Reunion. And then Chris, yeah. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 What are you doing? We got to read all of them. Like, all right. So Chris, yeah, 15 to 20 minutes is perfectly yes. fine. Uh, and like... It, that's another thing too. It depends on how 
far you're driving. Like if you're driving two hours, your temperature has probably dropped quite a bit in your coral cup. So it definitely doesn't hurt to acclimate longer. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, Thanks once they're done the acclimating, then we wanna dip it. So we've got some, uh, three dips here. This is the Coral RX. This is like the go-to, especially for parasites. So if you just wanna make sure you don't have flats or anything like that, this is the one to go to. You always just wanna follow the instructions carefully. It's four caps per gallon. Um, usually, like I said, when you get a cup of coral, it's a lot less than that. So just make sure you're just doing a couple drops. And then we've got the Coral Revive. So this one isn't doesn't do much for parasites necessarily. This is mainly if you have an injured coral, if it got stung by another coral, if it's got a little injury, this definitely helps. But um, this, you know, it might kill off some other like flatworms and easy parasites like that. And then we have the Reef Dip. And that's another coral that's effective. So this is um, uh, iodine based. So uh, this one is good for, healing. you know, yeah, healing and other like, you know, easier parasites. But honestly, the go-to for me is going to be the Coral RX. That's the strong one that's going to get, you know, all the tough stuff. So, yeah. Can I yes. just talk straight Yeah, there? I mean, that was great. <laughs> we, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I kind of already... And do, already what about it. plants? You don't have to acclimate plants. So, right? no, the big, plants just temperature acclimate. Uh, you don't need to acclimate the plants to uh, any type of water parameters as long as you're within reason and it's not like you're taking a plant that's in a pH of like six and throwing it in a pH of eight too, you know. <laughs> uh, then, yeah, I would acclimate the plant. But um, for the most part, uh, just make sure, you know, you float the bag and then obviously not taking any of the water that's in the bag uh, if there is any water in the bag. Oh, yeah. Most of the time, it. yeah. Most of the time, um, uh, plants will either be purchased or shipped to you um, either wrapped in like a paper towel or a napkin or something like that, moist uh, paper, um, or they will have some some amount of water in there as well. So, um, and Ali's gonna actually talk about that right now. You never wanna transfer any water yes. uh, that's in the bag that your fish comes in, especially if you're getting saltwater fish here, uh, because a lot of times in the quarantine system, we use copper, and at OSA we do use copper, so you don't want that in your tank, especially if you're retaining. Yes, thank you for reminding me, because that's super important, and we definitely have to talk about that. So, that's the thing with live videos, sometimes you just forget. Um, you so, yeah, way. so, a net is really important, too, because, like like he said, with our saltwater fish, we run copper in our system. Uh, so, that again, that's just to be a precautionary, because with new fish coming in, we just want to make sure everybody's clean and everyone's healthy. So, because of that, obviously, you do not want that water going into your reef tank, because that you could be detrimental to all your corals and any kind of inverts. So even if you have a fish only, I wouldn't recommend it unless it's something you usually do, you yep. usually treat with copper. But even then, the fish has been in the bag and they produce a lot of waste when they're in the bag, either um, urates Some or even, you know, or poop ammonia. Or yes. so you don't want that in your tank either way. So I would always just use a net, you know, of course, fit to the sides of your fish uh, and catch them out and put them in and rather than pouring them in. That's definitely not uh, recommended. Even with freshwater too, it's the same uh, idea. Yes, you know, I they're releasing a lot Never, of ammonia. Yeah. Uh, most fish will excrete ammonia uh, inside the bag because they're stressed as well too. So um, you're basically opening ammonia bomb and pouring it into your mm -hmm. tank at that point, depending on how long they've been in the bag. You know, if you have a five minute drive, it's not really that bad. But either way, uh, cross contaminating any water like that is never a good idea. So. Same goes for corals, too, you know, I mean, yes. they don't really release a lot of mo any ammonia or anything, but it's still, it's always just like a precautionary thing to just take it out and put it in rather than pouring any of, your, any of the water in. You got anything? Oh, for Winfrey. No, that's it. I just want to get pretty much on acclimation. If you guys worry about, biggest thing you have read an issue is when we worry about parasites and things like that. That's why quarantine tanks, I suggest them for everyone. Mm -hmm. I know that everyone's going to do water. it. Freshwater salt water, you should always quarantine your fish. That's like always go to. Uh, another thing is, too, my favorite piece of equipment on the face of the earth is UV sterilization, especially for salt water for free floating parasites. That is my personal top favorite. I feel like you guys hit this pretty good on the ball. Anything else, please? Yes. Um, um, I mean, that's really it. I just want to yeah. definitely push the fact that, like, our sis, you know, we treat our fish here, but it's not like our tanks aren't a quarantine. Like, these don't count as a quarantine, you know. Just because we treat them and we have them here doesn't mean you shouldn't quarantine your Correct. fish. It's still like we don't, you know, we do it for our, but we also want to make sure you do it at home too because they, you know, this isn't necessarily like a quarantine yeah, it's a, on its own. To so. guarantee quarantine, the fish need to be in that system for a certain period of time yeah. without any new introductions to be considered completely quarantined, correct? Exactly. Correct. Yep. So, yeah. So just keep that in mind, you know, uh, even though we do treat our fish, it's not 
like a, a quarantine, you know, so just make sure that you do that at home. Um, and like he said, not everyone can do it. So we understand that. But of course, like trying to do the best thing you can would be to have a quarantine set up just in case, just to have that peace of mind. That's awesome, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, uh, you're doing a fantastic Christopher job. Christopher? Um, yeah, Ruggers two times, asked. definitely. I mean, honestly, it doesn't hurt. Let's say a question if, first what? for somebody that's not reading the comment. Chris asked, how many rinses after using the RX Coral Dip on a coral? Um, I've been doing two. Yeah, so two times is fine. Like, we usually, I just rinse once, and I, like, get a, um, a cup of your own tank water, and then just kind of swish it around and make sure, you know, that Coral RX isn't on your coral anymore, because you don't want to introduce that into your tank. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, twice, three times, four times, doesn't matter. It's, you know, whatever gives you a peace of mind is totally fine. Yep. Um, one is fine. As long as you shake it off good, you make sure it's rinsed off. But, yeah, two is totally fine. Anything else? I think that's it. That's it, guys. That's it for Echo okay. Meeting. Yeah, I just have uh, a couple things to say. If you guys are not following us on uh, YouTube or Instagram, head on over there. Uh, find us, watch the videos and uh, the stories as well. If you guys want to see a sneak peek of what the coral farm looks like right now, Chris has been going absolutely ham. I don't think he slept in four days. He's becoming a hermit over there. <laughs> he has fragged so many corals. Like, last time I walked in there, there was, like, ten pieces of coral, and now there's, like, 500. So, like, like I think astronomical more numbers. Than that. Yeah. There may be more than there's that. There's, like, like, thousands like, over yeah, us. Like, there's so much coral over there. So head on over on the Facebook story, Instagram story. Check that out. Um, and we also dove into a new uh, social media platform, Scott and myself. We will be creating an Ocean State aquatic page. Uh, very shortly as well. Uh, but if you guys have not heard of it, it's called TikTok. Um, it's pretty hilarious. It's, so if you're it's not a good platform for like, I guess, younger generations. I'm not sure. sure um, older what are you trying to say, Joe? <laughs> no, I'm just, what are you trying to say? It's hilarious, okay? It's not, it's not always Scott something loves it, to don't be, let him yes, it's not a platform to be taken 100% seriously all the time. Um, it's kind of like a little bit joking with music, a little bit funner of a type of like video Way platform. Back, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not like 100% serious all the time like Facebook is. So um, <laughs> if you guys are interested in that, uh, there's been links up on the uh, Facebook stories as well. Um, so yeah. When's the next video coming out? Next video, hopefully tomorrow. All right. <laughs> So we're gonna check out that. Let's go on. What are we on? What is what the video on? Um, oh, freshwater water box uh, tanks. I did a uh, video on how to make it look, uh, like, you know, like really awesome. So I did like a little, <laughs> I did a little scape video, um, how to make your tank at home look like a natural, like style biotope, whether you're using live plants or artificial plants. Uh, so that's what I did the other day. That video should be coming out shortly. And then the next video we're working on is we across the farm is adding coral to the farm. Ooh. So. Um, I, I know we've kind of leaked that there's really coral there, but the YouTube series um, is, is obviously a little bit behind because it takes a little bit more time to edit. So. Alrighty, guys, we're getting out of here tonight. We appreciate you guys. We're taking off. We'll see you guys next Wednesday night. Yes, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. You guys want to take it out for us? Keep on reaping, baby. Keep it fresh, baby. Woo! Good.